Welcome to Arcadia. Today we'll go over a checklist to flesh out your world's starting location, or any other location after that for that matter. By the end of it, not only will you have a very detailed idea of your starting location, you will also have seeded lots of story hooks, encounters, NPCs, interesting locations, and everything else you might need for your first sessions there. Creating your own world is wonderful. It's one of the most singular pleasures that D&D can offer to you, and for some people, the main reason they like DMing. But if you're worried about the colossal amount of work that entails, relax. It can be as easy as creating your starting location and keep expanding it over the years. But you probably already know this, especially if you came from my other video on how to start world building, so let's get down to the checklist. Calling it a checklist is not the best description though, because unlike, I don't know, a shopping list, you don't need to tick all the boxes. It's better to think of these as prompts, suggestions to stimulate your imagination and help materialize a vision of your starting location in your head. If you know the answer to half these questions, it will be more than enough to start playing. So let's begin. Visualize the starting location of your story. Let's imagine it is a village. This list can be as easily applied to a town or even a city, but let's use a village as the example since it's the most common starting location. What is its name? Is it a made-up name like Fandalin, or is it a real name like Emmons Field? Real names often have reasons behind them. For example, my town of Windrose was named that way because it was built on an intersection, so it has exits on all cardinal directions. What is the reason behind your village's name? This can also inspire you to think about the story of that village. How did it come to be? Was it a frontier outpost to guard the kingdom against the goblin hordes? Was it an important stopping point for the caravans that eventually flourished into a settlement? Or was it occupied by human settlers on top of ancient elven ruins? What about the population? How many people live there? Medieval villages had about 100 people. Less than that will mean that your village is walking towards extinction. More will mean it's growing, perhaps on its way to become a town. Think about the visual aspect too. What are the houses like? What kind of trees and flowers can you find there? Are the roofs tiled or thatched? Are the walls wood or stone? You don't need extreme detail on this, just enough to prompt your descriptions when you're at the table. Your characters will need a place to stay. If your village is small, that probably means begging for a barn they can stay in, or perhaps asking a family if they're willing to take them in. But in decent-sized villages, there might be an inn. You can bet that's where your players will try to head first. What is the name of the inn and who is the owner? And who are the other people of interest in the village? Who is the local healer? Are they a druid, a cleric, maybe even a charlatan? What about the local merchant? After all, your players will need to buy supplies. And who's the expert on the surrounding region? The local hunter? The ranger who patrols the borders? Or the local hyperactive kid? Is there a temple or a place of worship in your village? If so, what god is it dedicated to? Who takes care of the place? And usually there will also be an expert about the folklore and history of the village itself. Maybe an old-timer who was there since the beginning? Maybe a researcher who's lingering around to study the nearby crypt? Who are they? and what price will they demand to share their knowledge with the players. Bear in mind that sometimes these roles overlap, for example, the local priest can also be the local healer. The history expert can also be the ranger who already explored the whole region. Finally, there must also be a village leader or a village council. Who are they? Do they actually hold the power or is it just for show and the de facto leader is someone else? If so, why do they prefer to lead from the shadows? Are there multiple leadership organizations, maybe split by areas of influence? In the Wheel of Time series, the government of Eons Field was split between the village council, presided by the mayor, and the women's circle. While one tended to the economic and security affairs, the other one cared for cultural and social issues. Speaking of organizations, are there factions in your village? Maybe all the farmers are society. Maybe the owner of the tavern is the head of an evil group of thieves and pawn sharks. Maybe larger organizations from the outside world have representatives here, like your world's version of the Emerald Enclave, the Harpers or the Zethrim. If you decide to include larger organizations at this stage, don't feel the pressure to detail everything about them right at this stage. 
Remember that world building is a marathon. It's fine to simply present a member of a certain organization to the players with nothing more than a general idea of what that organization stands for. You can always flesh it out later. Also, take a minute to think about what makes this village unique. Or in other words, what is more likely that your players will remember from it? Is it the abundance of sheep farms, since its main export is wool? Is it a landmark, like the lighthouse down the beach? Perhaps even a creature, like the feral owl bear that roams freely at night? The reason why the villagers need steel reinforced doors. Every settlement should have an element like this. It helps to give them some character, while also acting as an anchor to focus the player's attention and helping them remember it later. With all of these, you can already have a pretty good idea of what is your starting village, who are the main NPCs, and what are the social dynamics in there. Notice as well how some of the questions we've been answering can themselves serve as an inspiration for other things. For example, when I said a good landmark could be a lighthouse, that implies a sea. Is there a port there too? Are there ships in the docks? Where did they come from? When I mentioned a crypt, that probably means undead and a treasure. Who built the crypt? What is the treasure? And who guards it? If you keep piling questions on top of questions, you will add tremendous amount of depth to your world. But I'll talk about constant interrogation in another video. Let's zoom out from our village now. Consider the surrounding area. What kind of environment or biome is your village in? What is the surrounding area like? What are the visible landmarks like mountains, hills, lakes, or ravines? I'd encourage you to think of at least Three different biomes for your starting location, one for your village to be in, and two within two to seven days of travel. For example, your village could be in the middle of the plains with a forest to the south and a mountain to the far east. Or the village could be in the desert, with rocky plateaus just one day to the north and a sea about a week to the southwest. And expert tip? Name everything. It will do wonders to immersion. Saying to your players there is a mountain to the north is one thing. Telling them that what they see in the distance is the Colossus Ridgeback is a completely different one. When you have the biomes, think as well what kind of creatures live there. Are they monstrosities? Maybe the forest is teeming with undead. Maybe everything is peaceful during the day, but during the night a lot of fey crossings open up. If you feel extra motivated, you could even devise some wandering monster tables to roll just in case your players decide to explore. And what about intelligent creatures? What kind of tribe controls the wildlands? Are they goblins, kobolds, gnolls, orcs, drow? What do they want? How is their relationship with the village? Is it a peaceful stalemate? Is it a conflict? If so, are they winning or losing? Are there more than one band? Maybe more than one type of creature? Like before, give names to all of these tribes, but don't forget to decide who is their leader. One thing that I also like to do when I'm world building at such a small scale is create a boss monster for the region. Something that is a danger to the village, but maybe also to the other evil humanoid tribes in the surrounding area. For example, a colossal owl bear who's extremely territorial, a dragon who has a lair nearby, an evil archmage who's been abducting people for experiments, or even a beholder if your party is high level enough. If this regional boss is a beast or a monster with low intelligence, it can function as a force of nature, a walking natural disaster we must all brace for. However, if it's an intelligent creature, it can even serve as the BBEG of your starting location, the bad guy who's been pulling the strings all along and who the characters will discover is behind everything bad that has been happening lately. Regardless, this third party will create a faction triangle between them, the band of ruffians, and the village, and the resulting power balance will be much more interesting to explore. When you have all of this sorted out, there are only two things left to consider. The first thing is how your village fits in the world. Unless it is a lawless village in the frontiers or something, it probably belongs to a barony or a county. What is that region? And who is its ruler? Where do they live? Is it a town or is it a city? It is probably the closest big settlement. So what is it called? How do you get there? And how long does it take? What are the other villages of the region? How far away are they? And what natural obstacles you need to cross to get there? This village probably belongs to a country too. What is it named? Who is the ruler? Is it a king, a dictator, a council, a president? What about the culture? 
What unique behaviors do the population of this village show? Are they wary of strangers? Are they welcoming? Do they behave the same way with every ancestry or not? Have they even seen members of other ancestries before? How widespread are non-humans in your world? The second thing is probably the most enjoyable part. Where is the adventure? After all, we are building this whole sandbox for our players, right? What are their toys? Are there ancient tombs nearby for them to explore? Bandit hideouts for them to clear? Cave systems where the blacksmith's daughter has been abducted to? With all the prompts we have been answering so far, I'm sure you already started to think of some fun ideas for story hooks you can integrate within this starting location. Now it's time to have fun with it. Siege cool quests and objectives and secrets within all the cool details you already came up with, using them as hooks so everything feels seamless. Like I said before, you don't need to answer all these questions in order to have a solid starting location. After all, not every village has a temple or an evil humanoid tribe nearby. Just answer the ones which inspire you the most and explore those more deeply to compensate for the others. The most important thing in the end is for you to have fun. But even if you have less than half of these prompts filled, you will still have a starting location way more fleshed out than my first one. If this list sounded interesting to you and you'd like to fill it out, I organized everything in a PDF you can print and write over. You can find a link down below in the Underdark. And this is certainly not the last time I'm talking about world building in here, so if you'd like this kind of video, subscribe and click the bell so YouTube warns you when the next one comes out. Until then, there are always the other videos about DMing on the playlist appearing on your screen right now. Thank you for watching, I'm the first Arcadian, and in my experience, well-read people are less likely to be evil.